Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadr Aqil. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today at Ghudaybiyah Palace, the outgoing French Ambassador to Bahrain, Bernard Ghanal Fab. His Royal Highness commended the Ambassador's efforts in bolstering Bahraini-French relations and wished him continued success. The Crown Prince held the development of Bahraini-French relations at all levels and the efforts exerted by both countries to further enhance relations. His Royal Highness reviewed with the Ambassador the latest regional and international developments, particularly issues that are concerned with supporting security, stability and peace. For his part, the French Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to the Crown Prince for the support he received from the Kingdom, which facilitated his mission. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration and the King Hamad Global Center for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence were launched in Los Angeles, California. His Majesty deputized his representative for charity work and youth affairs, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the declaration signing. His Highness stressed that peace could only be achieved through understanding and effective participation affirming that the Kingdom of Bahrain recognizes the importance of creating an environment conductive for peace by empowering individuals and communities to feel comfortable in their own skins. His Highness delivered a speech on behalf of His Majesty the King. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am delighted to stand before you on this evening. I thank Simon Wiesel, Wiesenthal Center and its Dean and Founder, Rabbi Marvin Heyer, for co hosting this event. This evening serves as a reminder to all of us how far we've come in promoting interfaith dialogue and understanding, but also amid celebration, a reminder of a road ahead in combating hate speech and bigotry. Peace can only be achieved through understanding and active engagement. Love thy, love thy neighbor as thyself. It's called to all of us to let down our guards and communicate constructively and empathetically with everyone around us. In our community, in our country and in the globe. It's through understanding that we shatter our misconceptions and presumptions about the others. In the Kingdom of Bahrain, we realize the importance of creating an environment con conductive for peace by empowering the individuals and the communities to feel comfortable in their own skins. We do not seek a homogeneous world by one that celebrates an individuality and uniqueness of its various communities. By promoting religious freedom for all in the spirit of mutual respect and love, we believe we could have a world that flourishes on peaceful coexistence. In pursuit of this, the Kingdom of Bahrain will launch King Hamad Global Center for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence in November this year, inshallah. To contribute to a high-level global debate on the promotion of inter-religious dialogue and tolerance. Coupled with the signing of the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration, a global document that commits to promoting religious freedom for all. The launch of the center follows the faith, fruitful launch of King Hamad, chair an interfaith dialogue and peaceful coexistence at Pianza University in Rome last year. However, the responsibility to facilitate engagement and promoting inclusion isn't only limited to states and governments. We all have the responsibility to contribute positively to this dynamics through the small acts and kindness and care in our communities. When your children play in the park with others, 
children who might identify themselves differently than yours, then you promote coexistence. When you wave hello to your neighbor walking to a church on a Sunday or to a synagogue on a Saturday or to a mosque on a Friday, then you are an active agent for coexistence. It's those small acts of kindness that turn coexistence to an instrument part of our DNA and indispensable part of for our being as humans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be a Muslim and an Arab, a human, a citizen of this world. It is a world where love and respect are second nature and a world where there is no place for hate or violence. A world of peace. Thank you very much. For his part, the dean and founder of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Rabbi Martin Heyer, spoke about his first visit to Bahrain last February and his meeting with His Majesty the King during an unforgettable hour. Heyer stressed that the experience of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty is an important moment in history, where a leader of the Arab world urges Muslims, Christians, and Jews to affirm that nothing enduring was ever created by hate. For his part, Reverend Johnny e. Moore said that Bahrain Declaration represents an ambitious vision to highlight the best qualities of faith at a time when religion is hideously exploited before the world. The vision of the Bahrain Declaration calls for religious freedom for all without derogating from any religion, so as to be a living model of Bahraini society's virtues. Moore affirmed that the Declaration of His Majesty calls to play an active role in building a global world where the belief in God is a blessing for all mankind and a foundation for peace. He added that Bahrain is blessed with the culture of peaceful coexistence between Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus, who have created a unique way to coexist in peace and harmony for decades. He pointed out that Bahrain is constructing the largest Catholic church in the Arab world, in addition to hosting one of the oldest Hindu temples in Manama, which was established 200 years ago. Moore expressed his optimism that the Bahrain Declaration would be a glimmer of hope for a world of peace and coexistence among all religions. He hoped that Bahrain's pioneering experience will be a source of inspiration for other nations. Bahrain's ambassador to Kuwait, Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad al Khalifa, expressed his pride to attend the event in Los Angeles as a Bahraini citizen, proud of his country's rich heritage of multiculturalism and cultural coexistence. Sheikh Khalifa stressed that His Majesty the King is the biggest supporter of cultural diversity, harnessing all opportunities for dialogue among all religions, civilizations, and cultures. This is evident by His Majesty's visit to the Vatican and his meeting with the last three popes. For her part, the Secretary General of the Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations, Betsy Mathewson, said that the Kingdom of Bahrain was blessed with a king holding a wise vision and a firm belief that religious freedom is the key to peaceful coexistence. Matthewson explained that for hundreds of years, Bahrainis have embraced their neighbors from faiths of Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Sikhism, and different sects of Islam, and have lived with them in love and harmony, which distinguishes Bahrainis with a special understanding and respect for all religions. The Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration is a document written with the words and vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, a vision for a better coexistence between people who are different. No matter what the difference is, they are equally human. The gala dinner at the Beverly Hills Wilshire Hotel in Los Angeles was a celebration with over 600 guests from all religious communities that were there to sign and support the Bahrain Declaration. This is a, a big historic event. I've been sent by His Majesty as a his representative, and His Majesty King Hamad is a man of a vision. He, uh, he sees uh, forward and he sees a world for a better uh, life for all hum humankind. Um, if it takes us uh, one person at a time to change, then let it uh, be so. We have to learn, we have to live together, and with coexistence and uh, with forgiveness, Insha'Allah, this world is going to be one uh, family. We fight terror, we fight bad with good uh, means. Uh, the good always uh, wins against the bad. 
Um, His Majesty himself is the man who is behind always um, creating an impression that is different than anyone who, who would think about our region especially. We know it saddens us, uh, but it gives us a hope that for our next generations, inshallah, that we will build a community, that we will build a mindset that is uh, tolerant and that will work together as one family. And the best uh, definition, if you see this hole behind me right now, if you look from the extreme right to the extreme left and you see the difference of the people in, inside there, one day the planet is going to be like this hole, inshallah. The Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration is a document written with the words and vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, a vision for a better coexistence between people who are different. No matter what the difference is, they are equally human. The gala dinner at the Beverly Hills Wilshire Hotel in Los Angeles was a celebration with over 600 guests from all religious communities that were there to sign and support the Bahrain Declaration. We have to, in one voice, embrace the concept of tolerance and human dignity because the only way the great religions of the world will be relevant, if a religion wants to be relevant in the 21st century, it must speak out against terrorism and extremism. Otherwise, it's not really a religion. Anyone born in the image of God has to stand up against terrorists. So the Bahrain Declaration is the right time it's the right idea and it's the right place. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad was received today by Rabbi Marvin Heyer at the Simon Weisenthal Center, where His Highness toured the Tolerance Museum, which exhibits different controversial issues surrounding tolerance in our world. The tour took place in the presence of the This is Bahrain delegation and high school students eager to learn more about Bahrain's coexistence program. First, let me speak quite uh, bluntly because it's the only way I know how. This is a statement that is devoid of political correctness. It's exactly the language that millions of people around the world have been waiting, saying we know there are moderates, but who is going to stand up first and articulate it? So to have an Arab head of state to tackle these issues in such a direct way uh, is a game changer, and it's a call to action for institutions like ours. So we plan to bring uh, this statement for it to be signed not only by tonight by the 400 people, but to bring it globally. We have many contacts across Asia, in the Middle East, and in the Americas. And I haven't met any place yet, not from Jerusalem, not in Jakarta. We all need a heavy dose and a reminder about the importance of uh, tolerance. This uh, is a historic document, and we, we have our commitment that the Wiesenthal Center would do its share. Bahrain has been at the forefront of executing peaceful initiatives in all fields, but the main one has always been the initiative of peaceful coexistence, and that initiative has turned into a major project consisting of steps that are building a humane world for the future generations. I think Bahrain is going to become the Switzerland of religion in the world. I think that's what's going to happen. I, I think the, the center that uh, His Majesty is, is going to build in Manama will become the, the epicenter of, of discussions of pluralism and coexistence around the world. I think it'll be academic, it'll focus on young people, it will, you know, where religion intersects with a sector that matters at the heart of it will be this facility anchored upon this declaration and and assisted by other things, you know, like like the chair at La Sapienza. I mean, this is a a movement, it's a series of actions that will have, in, in my opinion, it will have a uh, exponential effect over time and I'm just I'm just beyond thrilled uh, to be a part of it all. This is a historic moment it's just the beginning and evidence of that is uh, the gathering of people from all over the world that came to Los Angeles. It shows the world is longing for a different way and out of the Middle East has emerged uh, this moment of hope and for all of us you know, Christian and otherwise you know, we're celebrating it because we found a place where, you know, at least I felt at home when I was in Bahrain, which is not an experience I've had in a lot of countries in the world. In the challenging times facing the international community and our region, the times of terrorism and extremism, the signing of the Declaration of Bahrain is a glimpse of hope, hope for future generations to come. This is Sarah Barek for Bahrain International from Los Angeles, USA.
The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the 24th Al Ayam Book Fair organized by Al Ayam Press Publishing and Distribution. The event will be held until the 23rd of this month at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. Sheikh Khalid noted the importance of reading and enlightenment in the face of all ideological, doctrinal, and political dangers. He called on enriching the minds of young children with knowledge and sciences. During the opening ceremony, Sheikh Khalid said that the inauguration of the specialized exhibitions in light of modern day refrain from reading is an initiative that requires annual support to provide a rich heritage for generations to come. He directed publishing and printing houses to employ modern technology in promoting reading among the youth. Sheikh Khalid hailed Al Ayam for hosting this event for 24 consecutive years, which is in accordance with the wise leadership's vision of providing a fertile ground for learning. For his part, the Leon board chairman Najib Al Hamar expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Khalid for inaugurating the 24th Al Ayam Book Fair. The 24th Al Ayam Cultural Book Fair, which will run until the 23rd of September, fostered Bahrain's Arab and international publishing houses, aiming to contribute to increased knowledge and creative abilities. Every year we have uh, successful uh, exhibition, book exhibition, and uh, we think uh, our um, uh, message for everybody in Bahrain and outside Bahrain, that's Al Ayam uh, Publishing, uh, they have uh, uh, to do for the uh, people of Bahrain and the others, which they are participation of this uh, book, uh, book fair. Bahrain Authority for Culture Antiquities, uh, we always aim to be part of Al Ayam Book Fair on a yearly basis. It's a great celebration of books, of knowledge, of various topics. We're delighted to, uh, to share our newest publications under the umbrella of culture and heritage together with, uh, with every publisher here today. The 10-day fair includes a string of various cultural and intellectual programs and activities that will appeal to all visitors and foster reading among them, including children for whom a special section was allocated. It's uh, for the three years, third year, Ibda'atna uh, Corner, it's uh, with the uh, Book Fair. Uh, we have a lot of programs, different, uh, different programs for the children from 14th of September until 23, 23rd of September uh, about cooking, story talent, uh, we have uh, cinema, we have crafting with uh, a lot of uh, groups and um, like uh, we said uh, Bahraini talent, they can um, help the children to choose their stories and read the stories and also how to use the stage like um, theater and um, what talent they have to give it in the future. Words Book House has been uh, participating in this book fair for almost 17 years now. Uh, you can say we are one of the founders of the place from uh, other countries than Bahrain and um, we can see clearly that it's expanding. The amount of participating uh, uh, book houses is getting largely increased and it, it's a great sign actually to the culture and uh, knowledge all over the world. The event aims to enrich the cultural movement in Bahrain and the surrounding regions with over 400,000 book titles and the participation of over 300 Arab and foreign publishing houses, writers and novelists, where exhibitors are able to display the latest publications in all fields of knowledge and intellect. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been an incubator for knowledge and creativity and the 24th Cultural Book Festival has been a platform for just that. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, affirmed the continuous progress of the Kingdom's democratic march to achieve the aspiration of its people, thanks to the wise leadership and vision and reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The speaker made his statement on the occasion of the International Day of Democracy that was approved by the UN in 2007 in order to encourage democracy all around the world, human rights and empowerment. He affirmed that this day is one of the Council's top priorities as it's a day that honors and respects human rights all around the world. And Mullah also said that the Kingdom has taken clear and firm steps towards the establishment of democratic governance. 
which is headed by the kingdom's respect for human rights and its recognition of fundamental freedoms, such as the freedom to join political societies, freedom of expression, access to power and practice within the rules of law, periodic free and fair elections, the separation of authorities, the independence of the judiciary, the provision of transparency and accountability in all public administration, and the existence of media that enjoys freedom, pluralism, and independence. The speaker affirmed that Bahrain's leadership and its people are able to overcome all kinds of challenges that aim to threaten its democratic march. It is worth noting that the International Day of Democracy provides an opportunity to review the state of democracy in the world. The United Nations believes that democracy is a universal value based on the freely expressed will of people to define their political, economic, social, and cultural systems and their full participation in all aspects of their lives. The Honorary President of the Good Work Society, Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, honored the Arab Voluntary Work, who won the Sheikh Isa bin Ali Award for Voluntary Work 2017 during the ceremony, held for the first time at the Arab League headquarters. Sheikh Isa hailed the Good Word Society for hosting the ceremony and expressed appreciation to the Arab League Secretary General for this initiative that aims to support voluntary work in the Arab world. In his speech, Sheikh Isa bin Ali congratulated all the honorees. For his part, the Secretary General for the Arab League expressed pride in participating in the ceremony, celebrating the Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for Voluntary Work in its seventh edition. He added that celebrating this award has become an Arab platform for spreading the culture of voluntary work and motivating creative initiatives and unique volunteer experiences in the Arab world.